Hello crafters, this is Yana Smakula. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm playing with several 3D embossing folders from Simon Says Stamp, and I have a simple technique to make gorgeous and easy embossed cards. Here's a look at the embossing folders I'll be using. These are the four new embossing folders from Simon Says Stamp, and they are all 3D. The 3D embossing folders will give you a much deeper emboss compared to regular embossing folders. The 3D embossing folders make the most detailed and deeply embossed backgrounds. And the best part, you don't need to add much to a card with a 3D embossed background because it already shines on its own. All you need really is just to add a sentiment. The four folders I have are Wine Canopy. Now I'm not using this folder in this video, but I do have four card ideas on my blog showing this folder in action. You can find a link to my blog in the video description below. Next up is the Leaf Bundle. And these folders, all of these folders, by the way, are all designed for A2 cards, but they can be adapted to other card sizes. Not so much the first folder design, but the other three definitely can be adapted to other card sizes. The next one is Rosewell Bouquet with a beautiful floral cluster. And the last one is the Wildflower Field embossing folder. And again, these are absolutely stunning. The deep embossing you get with these folders is like nothing else, and it doesn't even compare to regular dry embossing. When you make a card using these embossing folders, you don't need to add much. You just need to add a sentiment. Usually, I would stamp a sentiment on a separate piece of cardstock, cut it out, and foam mount it onto my card, onto my embossed card. Today, I wanted to try something different. I wanted to have the sentiment stamped directly on the background of the card as if I was making a one layer project. So I did a little bit of planning and a little bit of thinking ahead and here's how I did it. First, I pre-cut several panels from Simon's sea glass cardstock to four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I forgot to mention, it's best to use colored cardstock for these techniques. Of course, you can go with white, but in the second part of this video, I'm showing you an additional inking technique, and that only works if you use colored cardstock. I placed my first panel inside my mini Misty tool as I plan to use the Misty for my stamping. Next, I brought in my embossing folder and also the sentiment stamp that I plan to have on the card. So the folder is the Rosewell Bouquet and the sentiment is from the Spring Bouquets stamp set. I picked the Thank You sentiment from this stamp set and I used the packaging of the stamp set to figure out the best placement of that sentiment on my embossed panel, taking the embossed design into consideration. So at this point, nothing is embossed yet. I just have the embossing folder sitting on top of my colored cardstock panel, providing me with a guide where the design is going to be. Once I figure it out, I remove the folder and I position the sentiment on the panel. I fuss a little bit to make sure the sentiment is placed exactly where I want it because I do want it to overlap that 3D embossed design. And from here, I just stamp the sentiment as I would stamp any other image or sentiment on any other card. I did use Versafine Onyx Black ink for my stamping. This is a pigment ink. It's actually the best one out there for stamping sentiments. Now, this ink takes a little bit longer to dry because it is pigment. And this gives us an advantage because we now have more time to work on our background. I will heat emboss this sentiment in clear embossing powder, but I will heat emboss it only after I dry emboss the panel. I know this might sound a little bit complicated, but keep watching and you'll see how easy it is. So now I can pop the panel inside the embossing folder, make sure it is positioned just right, make sure it is aligned, and then I emboss it in my die kitting machine. I usually use my regular platinum die kitting machine or my big platinum die kitting machine. It has an eight and a half inch opening and I use just the platform. Then I add my embossing folder and a tan embossing mat on top. Now here, 
for the video, I have an identical machine, but smaller. So this is a six inch machine. And I wasn't able to use the embossing mat in this machine. I had to use several panels of cardstock instead. I just, I couldn't crank the handle and I couldn't send the sandwich through, but I am able to use that same sandwich in the exact same machine, in the exact same, but larger machine. So what I'm trying to say here is every die cutting machine is a little bit different. So test and see what works for your machine. Don't force things if they aren't going through, just, you know, Maybe instead of using an embossing mat, use a couple of panels of cardstock to make a shim and that will work just fine for you. And here we have a gorgeous embossed background with a stunning stamp sentiment that runs across the embossed background. It looks fantastic, doesn't it? Now, one more thing I forgot to mention is you will want to use some type of thicker cardstock. If you use thinner paper with your 3D embossing folders, the folder, the pressure might uh, tear the paper and it's not gonna look good. So try and use some thicker cardstock for these projects. And Simon Says Stamp color cardstock works really well for these. Now I'm going to set the background aside for a moment while I go back to the embossing folder. Notice the ink transfer on the folder. This will happen if you use a pigment ink that hasn't completely dried on the paper. The ink will transfer onto the folder. You'll need to clean this ink off of your embossing folder before you can use the folder again. Otherwise, this black ink will imprint on the next panel you try to emboss. I first like to clean it with a damp baby wipe and then I use some ultra clean cleaning solution. It's like the best cleaner in the stamping world and it does the job so well, it, it literally cleans any, any type of ink out there. Now we can go back to our panel. I want to set the ink to make sure it is not going to smear, and I can do that with the help of clear embossing powder. So I've added the powder over the panel. This is Simon's Fine Detail Clear Embossing Powder, and you can see the powder sticks to the stamping nicely. Now that's because that black ink is still pretty wet and it allows me to heat emboss the panel. Now I'm just going to use my heat tool and melt the powder in place. So now we have a double embossed panel. We have dry embossing to add texture and then heat embossing, clear heat embossing to add shine to the stamped sentiment. Now, the reason I coated the sentiment with clear embossing powder is because I plan to apply additional ink over it and over the dry embossed background, and I don't want that additional ink to mess up my stamping. Now, there are two simple inking techniques that you can do at this point to help this design pop. First, you can use clear embossing ink, watermark ink, and gently rub the ink pad over the embossed areas. This will add a little bit of shine and it will also darken the embossed design. So this will create a tone on tone look over the dry embossing. It looks absolutely stunning and it is so easy to make. I love this technique. Now, another technique you can do is to rub a white pigment ink over the dry embossed background. The white pigment ink will lighten the embossing and again, it will make it pop. It will be rather subtle, but it will look simply gorgeous. What type of ink to use, the watermark clear ink or the white pigment ink will depend on the color of cardstock you use to emboss your design on. None of this will work on white cardstock. You need to use colored cardstock for this technique. When you use darker colors of cardstock, very dark blue, very dark green, the watermark ink works best the white pigment ink doesn't look too good on dark colors of cardstock. It looks a little bit chalky to me, but do try and see what you like best. Now, as you do your inking, the clear embossing over the black stamped sentiments resists the white pigment ink. And should you get any white ink over the black stamping, you can easily wipe it off with a cloth like I'm doing here. So it's that simple. You pick colored cardstock, you cut it to size, you stamp a sentiment, you dry emboss the panel, you heat emboss the sentiment, and you add ink on top. Super easy. 
I trimmed my panels down slightly and foam mounted them onto A2 white card bases and I just added a couple of sequins from my stash to complete this, these cards. All of the supplies I used today are linked in the video description down below. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you'll give this technique an idea a try. Thanks so much for joining me today. Love you guys and I'll see you next time.